Good afternoon, everyone. This is Melissa with the StockSwish.com, and welcome. I always like to look at the market on the weekend when I'm not trading, just have some time to just think and relax and kind of see what everything happened and how everything uh, worked for the week. And I always review my trades and my own trading stuff on the weekend, too. So I think this is important for everyone to do. There's never a time that you shouldn't review your own trades and your trading. This is how you keep getting better. Uh, this is how I keep getting better. And I think it's important for anyone everywhere to do it. That's a trader. So let's look at the market. Uh, here we are with the cues, and my call in the market was spot on. <laughs> uh, you know, we're holding that gap. It, it was an important gap, and we're holding it, and we're not going to break it. So there it is. Uh, for anyone that doesn't understand gaps, uh, once again, I'm just going to highlight the power of the gap, okay? How many days did we run up here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 days up, we gapped up. It was a real gap. It was a good bullish gap, and we're holding the gap. It was 12 days up before we did this, and we're holding. And during this period that the market was coming in here red and bearish every day, Every day it was bearish. One, two, three, four. Even here we traded down bearishly. And even here a little bit before we flipped on Friday. We were the least bearish Friday of all the days, though, in the morning before we did this green bar. This bar that really happened traded really into the afternoon. Because we, we it took us until 12, 12 o'clock lunchtime to break over the high. And then we wiggled and jiggled a little bit before we really rallied into the close. And I, I saw it happening. I was sitting here at my desk saw the way we pushed off into the close and was expecting a big fat green bar someday. I thought it was going to be Monday, but we did it Friday. So we're, we're going to gap up Monday after this kind of trade up here into Friday, this late, late thing. We're probably going to gap up Monday and could possibly even actually gap up over this area on Monday. We could gap up to about 76-ish on Monday. I, I we, we might do it. In fact, let's, what do we do post-market here? All right, really nothing. It was Friday. But we could gap up, very well gap up there on Monday. So anyways, this just highlights once again how understanding gaps is essential to reading trends. Knowing what gaps are a good gap. Knowing what gaps are continuation gaps. Knowing what a corrective gap is. Understanding everything about it and the power of the gap. If you understand the power of the gap or how to read gaps and understand gaps and look at gaps, then you saw the same thing that I saw. Uh, the same thing that I said and the same thing that I've been saying. And uh, very interesting. What a strength of show of power. You want to look at power, buying power, strength? All you have to do is look at the cues. Utter, utter, utter strength. 12 days up. Gapped up into itself. Held, rallied, rallied for five days after it. Gap down didn't mean anything. Wasn't a good gap, gap down. Held, held, traded in week in the holding of the gap that happened back there on this date. I think it was the 9th. No, it was the 11th. And then we just took off out of nowhere Friday late afternoon. <laughs> so I was expecting a green big fat bar. I just didn't think it was going to come till next week and it came on Friday. So I think we gap up Friday and possibly up to about 76-ish and follow through higher. Here we are. Here we're going. This is what I've been talking about all along. Let's look here at the bigger, bigger picture. We got nowhere to go but up. So market's going to fall through higher for 2013. I've been saying that for a while. And how do I know how to read the market so well? Because I understand how to read gaps. And the interesting thing is I prefer to go short. This, I, I just love shorting. That's what I really, really like to do. That's what I love. However, the market's been bullish and I've been reading it accurately. So... Learning how to read gaps is essential to becoming a qualified trader, to becoming a professional trader. I think anyone that wants to be a professional trader uh, needs to understand and learn gaps. And whether or not you want to trade them or not in the day of the gap, understanding how to rate gaps and read gaps and what they mean and which ones are good or which ones are nothing on a chart is essential to understanding trends. And, and really, it makes a difference between you being able to make money or not make money. It makes a difference between me being able to make a call like I made that that gap was going to hold and that the red that was coming down was not going to break it. To be able to, I, when I make a call like that, I don't know what people think and I don't care. But honestly, 
I know that no one else is saying the same things I'm saying. <laughs> so, you know, people just, you know, really genuinely read gaps much differently than I do. I really have a knack for reading them well. I'm just honed in on them. I'm just like honed right in on these things and can see things in such a formulation and a fashion and such detail and focus that it makes me a good trader and a good teacher of gaps. So if you'd like more information on how to read gaps, email me at melissa at the stockswoosh.com. The next gap class is August 3rd and 4th next weekend. Love teaching my class. Love trading gaps. Can't wait to this week. What a good week it was trading gaps this past week. Earnings season is under full swing. Fabulous day to trade in the morning and go down with your day. So if you'd like any more information, email me at melissa at the stockswish.com. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend.